makes the Matanzas Basin special? Uh, it's 100,000 acres of land, and only 10% of it's developed. How many places in Florida are like uh, that? Dr. Brian Silliman of the University of Florida Department of Biology described the Matanzas Basin area as one of part of only 3% of the land mass in the United States that has an intact food web. I never web. really was quite uh, sure of what um, this place was, but it happened to be always coming down State Road 206 to Pellissier Creek to uh, Favor Dyke State Park over to Marine Land and going to the beach at Summer Haven and surfing and going into the intercoastal at low tide and going over to some of the islands there. And I never fully grasped how special it was, but I knew it was a place that we enjoyed going. And 10 years ago, when we had the opportunity to open the office for the Florida Wildlife Federation, it was going to be in Northeast Florida. And uh, serendipitously, we opened the office up uh, in Crescent Beach, so it's in the Matanzas Basin. Matanzas and Basin has such a diversity of habitats and such an amazing amount of diversity in both water and terrestrial life that we really need to take care of this Matanzas Basin. It's one of the most dynamic watersheds from fresh water to salt water, creating an estuary that's evolved over the last thousands, potentially tens of thousands of years since the last ice age. And we can do a lot for the future, giving a lot of information through this steering committee, and I hope everyone takes a vested interest in this area. Okay, my name is Jackie Kramer, and I'm relatively new to the area, but having grown up in Florida, um, it's a pleasure to be back in the state and in the St. Augustine area in particular. What I love about St. Augustine is, um, well, I love the people, extremely friendly, warm, welcoming, but it has a, a wealth of culture, arts, and uh, nature. And uh, I think that it's really important that we preserve what we can in terms of the things that we value here and given the changes that are already occurring and that we see impacting the, the land, this is a project that I, I chose to get involved yeah, the in. The Matanzas estuary is important because it creates, it, it, it creates a harmony with the whole natural system that we live in. And it starts with the forest and the, the, the origin of the estuary flows out of the forest. And, it starts with the with the pine, the pine forest and the hardwood forest and freshwater creeks and water flowing out of those creeks um, into um, in, in this particular area, for instance, into Pellissier Creek that then flows out into the Matanzas Basin and the Matanzas Estuary. And this whole system is a living system. And, and, and whether uh, people look at it that way or not, I think people understand it and in, in, in an inherent way. And I think that's what draws people to the, the, the Matanzas estuary and that system. Um, I am a real estate broker at Crescent Beach, have been for many, many years. My family's been there for ages and I have brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and my children ate oysters and clams probably before they ate hamburgers. And they know the fishing holes and they know where to get clams and they know about surfing and they know about, about kayaking and they know about paddleboarding and windsurfing. And it's a fabulous place where we have, but it really needs to be, we need to be careful because if you drive the coast of Florida, you can see that most places are not healthy. They're not biologically healthy and we have one and here's a chance for us to, to uh, make, some, make a difference. As sea level rise occurs, we're gonna experience the impact and this provides an opportunity for us to look at the area, identify what's special, what needs to be protected, and in terms of wildlife, the Florida Wildlife Federation is engaged in wildlife migration patterns. How does sea level rise interrelate with our built environments that exist today and our future built environments and our infrastructure? How does that relate so that we can make sure that as we plan future infrastructure, plan for sea level rise and make sure that we have adequate provisions for wildlife to be able to migrate through this area that 
not all of Florida has those opportunities uh, at this time any longer because they weren't able to strategically plan at the forefront of such a critical issue that um, we are facing This is a project here. that helps us identify what some of those changes will potentially look like as well as make um, plans to adapt to those changes, um, perhaps in terms of preserving certain pieces of land that might um, present opportunities for flood floodplain or, flood, or protection, wildlife corridors, and also give us an opportunity to talk about how we can develop um, the, the land that's still untouched in a manner that will minimize the impacts of the sea level rise. And being a part of this steering committee has been extremely valuable to me to see some of the insight, thought, and research that goes into the decision making that could potentially impact our future in the southern portion of St. John's County as well as northern Flagler County. Uh, the steering committee to me has given me a lot of insight into how we can really create better understanding for the future. And I'm with Rainier. And Rainier is a forest products company and we believe that this is an important project um, and the main reason is that Rainier has owned land in the basin, in and around the basin, tens of thousands of acres um, since the late 30s and early 40s and this project represents to us just the fact that it's, it's a critical, um, it's a critical feature of, of place that forms the community and <clears throat> defines the community here. And because we've been here for so long and, you know, we can understand the importance of that and the, the importance of the continuity over time. time. And yeah. now here we are at this, at this one juncture in time where we have an opportunity to make a difference. And I think the important thing is that we make a difference in a positive way. And that's why, that's why um, I think it's important. That's why, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the steering committee and that's why um, I think uh, Rainier feels like it's important to be a part of this process. And I have kind of a unique position here on this committee or stakeholder group um, as being the only developer. And I know a lot of people in the group probably feel the same way that I'm somewhat unique. And, and, I, and I think we're all probably a little guilty of the, the us and them mentality. And I, I think as we move forward on this issue and a lot of other issues, it's important to get beyond looking at us and them. I, I know for us, we own about 20,000 acres in this uh, basin. And our land is very important to us. It's, it's valuable to us both as a resource, um, for growth of timber, agricultural, and all types of things, as well as to long-term development potential. And so as I think about the basin study, one of the things I'm thinking about is how can we plan for this? And I, I think a good example is one of the things that we've already done um, as we look at the envision for the long-term use of our plans. As we were looking at the 5,000 acres in the city of Palm Coast, one of the first things that we did was we looked at what is, what is the land saying? What is it, what's unique about this, this particular resource and how do we integrate the development element into that? And, and we, we you know, teamed with Pierce Jones and his group at the University of Florida with Tom Hochter and we did um, large studies on wildlife, on habitat and so forth and so on. And so I, to me, I love this basin study because what it does is it looks at development, it looks at long-term planning at the regional scale, not, not the microscopic scale of a, you know, is this house in the right location, but rather it focuses on the larger term issues. And so for me, the question isn't, are we causing global warming? Is it just happening? The, the, the question in my mind is, as sea level occurs, what impact is that gonna have on us and how can we adequately prepare for that so that as we have people that are moving into our region, as we have businesses that are coming, how can we prepare for climate change? How can we prepare so that the overall resources are all enjoyed by the future residents and commerce of our county? Estuary. So it's the nursery for all of the, the fish in the area and the oysters and the clams and the water's clean enough. My family has had oyster leases for years and years down at Crescent Beach. The the problem that you face is you, if you don't take proactive steps 
you lose that cleanliness. And we know that we're making some mistakes worldwide. There are big die-offs uh, in the food web all over the world, and we've got a really unique area, and we have the chance to do some stuff to protect it and to make it and to go forward. We are part of that food web. It isn't them and us. We're in the middle of it. If the food web starts to die off, we are liable to die off. You have a less rich life and you put yourself at risk. Um, the thing that happened with humanity is that we have, the, we have the ability to think and reason and we see there are some issues. And so this type of a project gives us the ability to say, okay, wait a minute, we're making mistakes. Let's fix them. Let's don't do that. Do not let, do not let that water degrade. Do not let. So there are some, there's some proactive measures that are anti-degradation measures that need to be taken to protect where we live. Thank you.